Hey guys, I don't know if this is going to start yet, but um, usually the stream starts with a lag, so no, it always starts with a lag, and I think that is um, built in, that you can change, so I guess for some people that is kind of like an escape pattern, if you want to, I don't know, pause it or something. I don't know why this is. Might be also that it's because of like some sort of like processing system that uh, YouTube ha uses this extra time to output um, video in an optimal way. So today I'm using the Mikoral brush, and I don't know why this palette just jumped. There's something weird happening with this uh, palette. I'm not exactly sure what. There's something strange. Because I already set a default palette that I want to use and it is... Where is it? <laughs> it's this one. But when I went to the small mode, it just set the position to somewhere different. I don't know why. Okay, and one more thing about the colors that um, I'm trying a new mode just for fun. It's not set optimal for this stream, but I just noticed it in um, U Labs this application, and I decided to try it just for fun. So it's gonna be keep switching slowly throughout this stream. And the reason is because I want to, <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, don't worry about the timing. The reason why I keep these streams in such different times is because everybody is living on different sides of the planet, so if I had a stream schedule, for example, that I streamed every time at the same time, there would be a lot of people that would just never be able to join the stream because of that timing. So it's never going to be optimal for everybody, but that's the reason why I have these different times, because I want to give everybody the same chance to be in that right time zone at the right time of the day. Vivi is now having a nap and I made the risky move of like not putting her in her room because I just want her to be freely here because I'm at home but if she starts misbehaving I will have to remove myself for a few seconds to Lift her into the next room, then she might have a temper tantrum when she wakes up, but I'll try to be quick with the painting, I guess. Hello from Russia. To um, a Simon King. Okay, I guess I should get to the actual fish part, <laughs> since that's the title. Um, one thing that I did not think about at all is how I'm going to arrange my reference on screen, because I have this like tiny reference image on the PC screen. There's so many windows open, I really need to get this other monitor working. I guess with the screen sharing, there needs to be at least like some um, visible space on the screen for that monitor, otherwise it might turn off uh, the iPad visibility. Threshold was just so crazy that 
it ignored the oval shape. I hate working so that I don't see the actual silhouette properly, so I'm going to just slap this on invert. It's not the color that I'm going to use, but this will just make it easier for me to see what I'm doing with this shape. So I want to make sure that all of my brushes are in the same mode, so that I can keep the texture consistent. A to Rimastu in Indonesia. I wish I could be somewhere warm like that for a few hours. <laughs> so, um, it's uh, all here. So. Quite rainy. I like rainy. But just sometimes it would be nice to be in a warm weather for a few hours. slightly off. Kind of curving upwards. I don't know if I want to do that. I will use the reference to the point where I want to, but if I at some point I decide that this is more fun way to draw a sun piece, then that's what I will do. Sometimes it's also fun to just like, um, if you kind of know what an animal looks like, is to think that like, I will look at the reference later and then just go from memory and every time I do that, I usually am more happy with my own results than trying to fix it when I see the reference, because I have made all of these like super childish uh, mistakes, and I, I guess those are super funny <laughs> for me, <laughs> at least to my eyes to look at. Okay, I, I'm pretty happy with this main shape. Okay, so there's this um, small thing about right here. It's not a sideways thing, it's more of like this cute whisker type of a thing. And we will keep that as a separate layer. I think I could cut away some of this um, empty space. Since this is the look direction, then usually that means that it needs a bit more space than this direction. As a look space. Are you using spectra? I have no idea what that is, so probably no. Okay, now I think I can go back and invert this. Let's see. If I had this on all the time, I wouldn't have seen anything that I was doing. I think more important than where the eye is to get this like splotchy area in about the right area on the body. Hello, Jonas Kurt is saying, uh, this is the first stream I have catched. I'm having trouble painting a campfire at night. I'm unsure of the lightness of the orange hue and how it colors the other elements in the painting. Um, be careful with white. Uh, try not to have any white in your painting, especially when you paint fire 
or any light source that is kind of like an important part of your composition, make sure that you leave space in the values to that top range. It doesn't mean that your fire has to be, like for example, this is a bright orange, but there's still so much space into the lighter area or to the saturation range too. I mean, this isn't an example of painting a fire, but as you can see how light this or dark this hue is, if I put that color in middle of this painting that has so many dark tones, it will look completely bright and super saturated. It doesn't have to be saturated to the 100%, it's just about what is surrounding that color. And the same goes with fire. And then when you color other things with that uh, orange hue, think about the material and how glossy it is. So how much that catches the light. Try not to like color everything like 100% orange but then just have some variety. This would be a good uh, opportunity for you to do an analogous color challenge out of this one. Just like a um, big range of hues here, and then try to do something that would be like, for example, that would look green, but just using these hues, green and blue. You can do it with uh, the right combination of grays. Uh, I recommend watching the analogous colors video and then how to use gray. I think both of those should help you with that specific problem. I'm trying to be efficient with time because, as I have said many times, I am working on the uh, Procreate uh, tutorial video thingy and I'm going to need a C stand for it. And I have watched C stands that are available here online and I think I need to see it in person when I saw one at the store. So. I'm gonna see if it's the kind that I need. The purpose of the C stand is just to have the camera um, on a stand that is not on the table. So for the previous video I used a boom arm and you can see a small camera shake sometimes when I'm leaning on the table and I'm trying to eliminate that completely. But of course C stands like pretty much any video production uh, equipment they are super expensive, so <laughs> these are not easy purchases to make. Not just like how expensive they are, but because they are expensive, you want to make sure that you get the right one. According to Wikipedia, the surface of a sunfish is almost completely like uh, 
sandpaper throughout. So it's not as slippery this at all. So there's a great variety on the like the tail reels. I don't know if this can be called a tail because some sunfish seem to have a body that is completely lacking this end part. I want to have less of this so that the whole thing looks a bit more chunky. What about that chunkiness? Do you use Ibis paint? X. No, I don't. Yes, I use Procreate. It's also in pretty much most of the titles in my videos. I guess if I can get a new table where I can get this um, scene tick on, I can do some live streams with Photoshop too. Since I'm already working here in this room, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter what program you use. This is why I have said that like if I'm gonna do an advanced um, course on digital painting, doesn't matter what program you use, you can use the same information in Photoshop, Ibis Paint, Sketchbook Pro, Procreate, Krita, Clip Paint Studio, like the same rules and even the same tools are in every one of those. read some of the comments now. Um, hmm. I wouldn't recommend trying to paint overlaid image. Uh, I would probably start with uh, darker colors and then work your way towards the lightest area of the flames and um, keep track of like the hues. The hues have to change so you will learn about the way the light works at the same time. No, I'm not using Nikoral brush. This is Mikoral brush. M. <laughs> See? <laughs> what was the last time you painted traditionally when I sent um, my friend in Seattle a card? I sent her a card that I painted in with gouache. 
are you planning on doing critics? Mm. Uh, hmm. This seems like a work thing. This doesn't seem like something that I would do here. And the reason is that I know that a lot of YouTubers do this, that like they just like pick random people's paintings and then they critique in public. But uh, when I do it as an art teacher, I know the student's skill level. I know that what they have been taught. I know that what is in their knowledge. So I can reference those points when I give the critique. And I know their body of work of like what I can expect from them and what is their biggest pain point. So just picking a random painting and giving it critique, I don't think that would be helpful for that person. I mean, like it wouldn't be actionable advice because sometimes when you give the wrong critique, it can do more harm than good. I, I feel pretty strongly about this because I've been doing like art critics for a really long time and it by far is the hardest thing to do and I wouldn't toy around with it meaning that I wouldn't do it in a way that I would risk someone's um, passion for art like for example there are sometimes these like in art events there are these portfolio reviews that like some fancy artist is just like looking through some uh, aspiring artists portfolio and then they just crush them i don't see much value in that personally but if you like doing that go for it but um, if i was an art student i wouldn't do that i would listen to your art teacher who knows you better and can give you advice that is good and better for you and comes with some like action steps on what to do. If any one of like uh, my previous students is watching any of these live streams, at some point um, know that the critique that I was giving in the art class was like specifically meant for you and at the stage that you were in at that time. I really like doing these dots. I think that's going to be one of the most enjoyable aspects of this painting. But, uh, I'm gonna have to figure out something in this background too. Uh, and I was thinking that maybe I could put some like crazy colors here. Um, someone was, uh, by the way, I was reading, I usually don't like comment on negative comments and I don't think this is really a negative comment, but uh, sometimes people comment on my voice that like, uh, you sound like you're about to cry. And, that is true in like at least one of my videos. Um, I guess when I'm talking about why your art should have a name, that was like really difficult talk to get through. It was like emotional cutting in video format. So yes, sometimes that happens. Uh, but also in one video where I was getting this sort of a comment, uh, one guy said that like, why do you always sound like you're laughing? It's just like <laughs> in the same video, some people are think that I sound like I'm crying and laughing at the same time. I thought that that was funny. No, I'm not going to ex apologize for enjoying life. I don't know if that was even meant as a critique. And honestly, I don't think it's worth thinking about that deeply. Maybe there could be some like smaller fish here. I sometimes seen like pictures online of sunfish where there are these like tiny fish swimming right next to it and those make the fish itself look huge, which it is. 
the biggest ones have been over three meters in length. That's a huge fish. I, I guess the biggest one uh, was measured because it actually hit a boat. I want to use colors here that aren't that saturated yet. I know that that will give me more leeway with the editing. Someone last my someone missed my last print by two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I remember in the last stream I said, also in the comment that I posted and pinned, and it's still there, I said like, I'm definitely not doing a playlist because that will bombard the views of my channel and engagement. And I was right, <laughs> but then I did it anyway. That's because uh, for the weather box I made this playlist for myself and I was working on the playlist for most of the week. And my intention was to make a video about um, how to do fish eye perspective and I guess I'm still going to do that video at some point but then when I was talking over that playlist I was just thinking like it's such a shame that I have worked on this playlist for so long and then just putting it in the background so it's there at least I have listened to it uh, three times now since I posted it just for fun while working so at least I'm using it This is a sunfish. Um, sunfish is from the same family of fish as uh, buffer fish. And apparently when they are young, they have this like more ball-like shape that actually has spikes. And if anybody is wondering, yes, the only reason why I know of this fish at all is because of Animal Crossing, obviously. Because that's where I learn all of my Animal Kingdom information. I have a problem, flashlight is saying. Uh, I bought my iPad three weeks ago and install installed a paper-like screen protector. My Apple Pencil tip is already busted. I'm not sure why. Am I applying too much pressure? Maybe don't use a screen protector. I don't know if they sell the tips separately, but then again, it's Apple, so... And yes, you are using too much pressure. You should go into the, here to preferences and um, edit pressure curve. And you should set your pressure curve as my curve is going like upwards like this. Do the opposite and make it go like this. 
this uh, like not a concave shape but a, not a convex shape but a concave if you're looking at it from this orientation if that makes sense and then make some brush strokes use the basic brush to test this and see if like you can easily get to the 100% opacity and that will over time make you let go of that death grip that you have on your Apple Pencil. Also, maybe like throw that screen protector um, to the recycling bin. This video is not sponsored by Paperlike. <laughs> is really high for this one. I like this texture in the Mikko Rall brush, so I wanted to have a high resolution so I could preserve some of that for the print. Will there be fish babies? Probably not sunfish babies. Uh, they look kind of cute though, but I am not familiar with their shape. So probably just like random Mikko events, fishes, fishes. I'm trying to add more light to this. I'm looking at the reference on the screen. This area and then there's this like weird uh, ski box shape here. Okay, it's gonna leave that here and some scratches in this area. By the way, I love the Persona uh, character designer. It's weird that Persona 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. 3 is great too, but like I guess like playing 4 like honestly I think like made me a better person and that's some big words to say about a video game, but if you have played Persona 4 you will probably understand why. Um, but even though I love Persona 4 so much, I still haven't played 5th. Because I already waited for it to come out for like 10 years, so when it did come out, I was in no rush to play it immediately. It will be what it is when I get to it. And now there is a royal version of that too, so... I already bought the 5th, but I will probably buy it again and just play the royal version.
I haven't changed the tip of my Apple Pencil even once and I've made like hundreds of paintings with this already. So I recommend doing that uh, pressure, pressure curve tip depending on like what you need. Probably the death grip is the most common way to hold the pencil. For me it's actually the opposite. So I have a very light grip. I used to have a death grip, but then I used that to get rid of it. Back when I was using uh, Wacom products, they also have the same system. So if you're using Photoshop to paint, you can also do the same pressure curve thing. But instead of using the Photoshop controls, you can do it in the tablet controls itself. Maybe these lines should be going to the other direction. Makes composition sense. Burn mark on the pen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I have actual blood <laughs> on my Apple Pencil when filming the last video. That's why I had to like stop filming so many times and keep reapplying the band aid because of my cooking mistakes. That was a real disaster. What do you think about uh, Art Studio? Remind me again what Art Studio is. I have no idea. <laughs> I guess is is it that application that is like um, Art Grades, but for iPad? I think that's pretty great because there's a free version of it that is quite limited. But I, I tried some of the brushes. I think it's very close to Art Grades if it's the application that I'm thinking of.
But I guess my intention with uh, digital art is never to kind of like mimic traditional art. So it's not like really geared towards someone like me. But if that's your thing, like definitely go for it. What I really liked about Art Rage is that when I was doing oil paintings all day and I was kind of like transitioning into digital art, I found that Art Rage was easier for me to do than for example painting in Photoshop because it followed the same logic of color mixing except of course like when you're mixing oil colors it depends on like which actual hue you're mixing with other hues and you actually need to know the materials so it's not that precise but like the general logic of like in what order to paint things was the same so that's why I liked Art Rage I don't know if it still exists. I just need to see what I'm doing, so that's why I disabled the background for a while. Actually, I'm put it in low opacity mode. Just need to see the edge. This color doesn't have to be white because I can adjust it later. I'm trying to like go over the edge as much as possible. So I'm gonna set this as a clipping mask. Now the alpha is locked, so I can go over it with a proper color. I 
um, the unpronounceable saying, my iPad gets too hot. Maybe because my drawings are so <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've noticed that like having this um, keyboard probably keeps in the heat in the system a bit more. So that might make the system heat up even a bit faster than it needs to. By the way, I don't have this connected right now to USB-C. So I need to be done with this painting before I run out of battery. I really need to like stop messing with this. So irrelevant the detail. What's the time for you? Uh, it's 12. So this is my morning coffee. Uh, the third cup. We just uh, went out for a walk with uh, Vivi. And then she had her freak out. And now she's having a nice little nap. Hopefully not chewing any one of my shoes. I used to hide all of my shoes in the bathroom, but then I realized that this is not a long-term solution. So now the shoes are where they used to be. I'm just trying to teach her not to touch them. she quite quickly realized that when she starts chewing on like my more expensive shoes that's when she can get a really nice reaction out of me and then there's interaction and if she's really lucky like even a chase to get her to stop <laughs> oh. it's a process I think overall with this dog, I'm doing way, way more dog training. But it seems like there's also a bit more need to it. I used to think that like all dogs are pretty much the same, but now that I have her, I think she's a bit like um, a lot of work <laughs> compared to the previous one. And also there are good aspects to it as well. I guess I have now more active lifestyle too, so I have time and energy for this stuff. But like sometimes when she has a freak out in the middle of a walk, it's hard. Because the progress with those things is so slow. What do you use to mirror your iPad to PC? Zoom. We are all in a Zoom meeting right now. I'm just having a meeting with myself, so that's why I don't at least yet have to pay for the Zoom. I paid for the Zoom when I was uh, doing a concept art course. Because that allowed me to also record the uh, critique sessions. Uh, 
I guess the school wants to monitor them somehow that I don't say anything inappropriate to the children. They're not children, they're like in their 20s. small mouth around here. I'm trying to paint it in a way that I can suggest it. There. Would you consider doing some Halloween paintings this year? Hmm, maybe. I think I have one idea that I could do. It just depends on the timing, if I can make it in time. I really need to get this um, C-stand <laughs> business sorted out, and that requires traveling. Previously, when I was working full time, like I could just like work on these sort of digital products, like my own um, video courses on my free time. But right now, it's kind of like more pressing that I get progress done on those. Also, this business coach that I have for a few uh, more sessions, I want to show her that I have some progress on what I have done. Sometimes when I look at the screen, I can see like a tiny thumbnail version of this. I don't need to use the, um, the screen filling navigator. Suyad um, Bakir is saying, can you share your thoughts while you paint, your thinking and decisions? It helps us to understand how you paint better. Um, I guess that's like easier for me to do in uh, videos where I'm doing the voiceovers. I'm trying to do that here, but I also need to keep my like design brain on when I'm doing all of these decisions. And then also trying to produce language at the same time. I hope you can understand that that's a lot my brain to handle. Sometimes when I'm doing it, uh, when I'm explaining what I'm doing, I am doing sort of like what I like to call virkausmaalausta, like sort of like knitting equivalent of painting, where I have already made the decisions and then I'm just doing the manual labor of how to execute that idea. But when I'm trying to find the idea of like how I can solve a visual problem, like it really does consume all of my um, attention. 
Usually when I'm out in public and if I'm like seeing my friends, I usually paint pretty much every time I see them and I can maintain the conversation, but in those situations I'm not painting any like design work when I'm in a coffee shop or having a conversation with people. I try to do parts of the painting that doesn't require my pain brain. Doesn't require my pain. All art requires pain. No, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> Poor yes, Nick. I'm trying to add a bit more green hues to this body because I just because the body is uh, taking such a huge area of the whole painting. I want there to be enough like hue variety. That's why I'm using smaller brushes to add it because then it will kind of mix optically in the viewer's eyes. Like for example here, if you zoom in really close, you can see that there are these sort of like uh, gray marks right next to the very saturated green marks and blue ones and then when you look at it from far away that's how you get this sort of like cool vibrant look to the painting I call these high calorie surfaces I think it's good to have these high calorie surfaces in areas where you want people to be looking at and for their eyes to spend time in I think there are also some dark spots in like this area, so I need to get that done too. But when I'm adding this sort of like more constructive like shape paint strokes then I really need to use a bigger brush otherwise it will just make the painting more messy I need to do the same but with shadows What do you think of the new Instagram algorithm and how it affects individual creators? AC Arts is asking. <laughs> Other question. I don't know what the changes to the algorithm are. I think a lot of these videos that are speculating about the Instagram algorithm are just like pure speculation without any actual facts. If Instagram itself comes out and says something about the changes that they have made, then I think it's interesting to know as a creator, to know how you should change your behavior. But I haven't heard. Is it a change that they have said from the Facebook side? about what has changed, or is it just people speculating? I still have battery, I need to check that sometimes. Okay. I need to do the same 
Mm. But with shadows. The way I'm, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because there's so much texture already in there, and I want to preserve it. That's why I'm applying the color this way. It's not my normal method of painting shadows. The time saver here. That's all. I think the pin can also have some white spots, which makes it more fun to paint. I think I would paint to 3D with some of the spots. I'm gonna try to kind of erase that effect by doing this. I think it's really hard to uh, get any type of reach as a new artist on any social media platform. Take for example YouTube. I made videos for an entire videos. Like I will admit that those were like terrible videos, but for the first year, like absolutely no one was shown my videos. And you can see this from uh, suggested traffic and recommendations none of the videos were recommended ever during the entire year that I was posting regularly and even the search words weren't uh, helpful. You can do a very specific video about a very specific topic that doesn't have any searches and then when you type that uh, search term into the YouTube search bar your video doesn't show up. It's just because like you're not established enough in the algorithm for them to trust you with the search result. So a lot of these uh, SEO tactics, they don't really work unless you are a creator that has already done years of work on that platform. I don't know if you have noticed, but like recently I've been posting um, some of my artwork with the location geotag set as Finland. And that's just because I can do it. I would never recommend that to anybody who is just starting a new gallery to put a geotag as their country. Or even hometown. thing is that like no matter what they do 
you can either just play the game or like opt out. There isn't really a third option. And usually it's just volume. Keep posting content. That's all. <laughs> But it, it is a skill, I think, when I started um, doing Instagram content, I have since learned a lot about the platform. Like for example Twitter, like I'm terrible with Twitter, just because like my skill with Twitter is like terrible. I don't think that like other people that are popular on the platform, I don't think that they have like that much better art than me. They're you know, just better at using the platform. Same way on Instagram, there are a lot of artists that are better than better painters than me that just don't know how the platform works. And they are having trouble growing because of that. Mikko, a question. Do you like the feeling of painting in digital or on paper more? I definitely don't like painting on paper. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but a good base with like quality oil paint, I think that's the best feeling. And when you have enough of it, when you are wealthy enough to paint with good quality uh, oil paint on a canvas that you have prepared yourself properly and when the oil paint just like slides on the surface and doesn't immediately sink into the canvas that's the best feeling I guess it's also one of the kind of like intuitive reasons why I really dislike having tons of friction when I'm painting digitally and there's just like this built-in feeling in my head that this is expensive. <laughs> this is expensive and I'm killing the color because that's the feeling that you need to have when you're painting with oils and then if you feel like there's a lot of friction and all of the paint is sinking into the canvas and it's not um, covering the valleys of the canvas texture, then you are killing the color and you're also basting it.
I'm trying to keep 100% opacity all the time because otherwise I will get these areas where I'm not making strong decisions and then I will have to get back to them and fix them and because this is a live stream I just don't have time for that so I'm trying to keep at 100% opacity even though it often feels safer a bit less opacity it also produces quite like messy look that I don't like people that are new to the stream as well. Uh, I, um, LV is saying, I can see that you are not using smudge tool that often. Is that because of personal style or are there any specific reasons for that? It produces messy results and it doesn't make you do um, brush strokes that define or describe the shape. Same goes for Photoshop, especially for Photoshop. And Clip Paint Studio. Don't do it guys. It's like bad decision. Or do what you like, but that's not my recommendation. This much tool basically has to create the colors between the two colors to blend them, which means they will often appear muddy. And this is not you. This is not the right way to blend colors because you're not choosing the in between colors. There is local color and then there is shadow color and highlight color. And if you blend from highlight color to shadow color, you're missing the in between colors, and that's not the way light works. So that's also one reason not to use it, because it, it drives you of the opportunity to learn how to use light and shadow. Also, you, your painting just won't have it in, in that phase. When you're moving from highlight 
to local color and from local color to shadows. It's not a smooth transition in hue. It goes through whatever curve that is set by your light source and material. All of those things be considered. And of course, what's the style is. How am I doing on time? Okay, ish. <laughs> be faster. So, I completely missed the themes of these fishes. I'm going to do one more of these and then I'm going to do a small blur on this to give um, some sort of like subsurface scattering effect to the light. But it's set as a clipping mask so I know that it will kind of sink into the bodies of these small fishes. I think there's something about the vibrancy of these fishes that still could be improved. I'm gonna look into that later. Now I need to motor. But just add a little bit more hue variety and vibrancy to these fishes and the reason why I'm doing it via layer mask is because I want to kind of like prioritize the fish that are closer to the sunlight. That's that. There aren't like bubbles up underwater, but um, cry me a river, I suppose. <laughs> it's my painting, damn it. It's carbonized ocean.
can adjust the pressure of the smudge so it doesn't get muddy, right or wrong. I think these sort of questions are a trap because then somebody will get angry and somebody always feels super passionate about using the smudge brush but then I will probably be the one who is gonna ask in five years do you still like the smudge brush and then they will answer no I have grown out of it <laughs> but <laughs> if somebody wants to use it I'm not gonna come and stop you Also it depends on like where what you are doing. There are certain elements where I think it's a good tool as any, but only for those very specific things. This wouldn't probably be, for example, <sighs> even in at the advanced painting class, I wouldn't bring out what situations to use this much brush because it wouldn't even register on the list of things that are more important. This is why I usually don't paint the maximum resolution in live streams. It kind of like minimizes the possibility of crashes happening. But when I'm painting by myself, like just restarting the application in two seconds, like it's not really a hindrance in any way. saying the plants will produce oxygen so there will should be some bubbles <laughs> thanks for coming up with a reason i will go with that excuse In the last stream that I missed by two seconds, you talked about getting administrators or admin for your chat. Yeah, I already uh, did that for one person. I found out where the controls are. Let's see how that goes. I don't know what, like, what is the maximum amount of damage that one person could do if they chose to use that power wrong. But I guess I could just like always remove them for the list. I hope that the risks aren't like super high. But the person that I gave the rights to, like, I, I trust. I trust her. To be honest, like when I thought about making a stream today, I thought that like it would be super fun to do like one of these like pastel type of paintings. And then I thought like I should use that that uh, ultimate charcoal brush. 
But then, honestly, I didn't have time to make it because I have made a tutorial on how to make this charcoal brush and it's super awesome. I recommend that you do it. The tutorial is super quick and it's free because it's uh, on my channel. So you can make that brush for yourself and it's the brush that I would have wanted to use. But this is also um, good because this probably has more control and if I'm completely honest, considering the time limitations of these live streams, this uh, amount of control with the shape of the brush probably is something that um, has helped me get this far along in this uh, illustration as opposed to the charcoal brush. But if you have more time, it's a super fun brush for like pastel type of paintings. Now that I have that like gradient thing on a top layer. Now I can keep color picking the same parts that I'm using and then the hue will slightly change towards that uh, gradient on the top layer. So that allows me to add a lot of this sort of like really small, shouldn't be even that noticeable hue variation. Wow, that's the second time. I'm really at the edges of like the resolution it seems. Could I delete some of these layers? Let's see. These two can go together. What is this? These two are the same things. And I'm gonna just group those as well. Does this layer even have anything? No. We merge it down. Merge. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit. But I don't wanna scale down the resolution just because of like some quick crashes. I don't know, for some reason it's making me smile and uh, that is what I like about this. Probably it also makes my voice sound like I'm laughing all the time and I'm sure that that will annoy someone. What's your favorite snack to go when drawing? Well, um, coffee. It took me one week to finish one painting. How can you draw every day one piece? Um, with that time limit goal, I wouldn't recommend like that amount of uh, hustle for everybody, but I have to say that that one year when I made 200 paintings, that was an amazing experience. It just like affected my life in so many different ways, because no matter where I was, like, I always knew that, like, do I have time to do a painting right now? I'm always on that deadline of, like, I need to get at least half of a painting done all the time. And working whenever possible. And that just, like, really changed my perception of, like, where can I actually get paintings done? And it's just... Sometimes when you are kind of, like, tired and you say that, like, I don't have the energy to paint right now. Like that one year completely changed what I think that limit is because even when I'm tired, I know that like I can probably still paint. I can still probably get a painting out. I don't recommend like anybody doing this who is like prone to burnout, especially if they feel like they have problems with their creativity when they push their productivity that way. But if you can do it, like you can, definitely push those boundaries of productivity if you set yourself like proper time limits. And if somebody is like learning art, then I think 
time limits are super important too. Because otherwise the students will focus on the wrong things. But if I give them a time limit that like this exercise that we are doing right now, it has to be done within this class. So like start painting right now and it will be finished in 30 minutes and we are not gonna get back to this painting anymore. So that makes them really prioritize like the visual impact and the thing that we were just talking about in the lecture that day. I know that like most students probably hate this, but it's super effective. Like especially when we have these sort of like speed painting sessions, you can easily see when I have done this a few times that like they get such quick improvement. <laughs> otherwise they will be just like doing skin textures and blending colors and so on and all this nonsense. That really distracts them from the main things that they should be learning. saying I'm a software engineer but I love painting so usually I keep two to three hours every day to draw to keep myself to keep my head clear two to three hours is a lot I mean with just one hour you can probably get a painting if you set your goals right but definitely when I was doing that like high volume year you will just like start editing the ideas that you have in your head like okay this idea is doable but if I have to be done in three days and three days was the absolute maximum that I allowed myself to work on a single painting what things are important for this like message to come across because I can't make a realistic human being in the background riding a bicycle if that's not the point of the piece so you will come up with these sort of like creative ideas to get the same ideas across and it usually makes the message better because like you are also editing out all the irrelevant stuff that come in front of the message so then you will have your finished paintings and then you will easily be able to tell that like this painting is about this one thing and that's the one thing that I focused on and it the finished piece will be more impactful because you cut out all of this extra crap that would just like uh, muddle the message. So it does make your paintings better and it makes you a better storyteller. But it's not enough just to do it for one week. I think like over time you will come up with those uh, coping mechanisms to survive the extremely tight deadlines. image to kind of like place these spots in roughly the same ish areas. These quibbles were the main reason why I chose the sunfish because I know that like even though I'm doing a real thing that I will have some creative freedom on the placement of these. I set it as a clipping mask so I don't have to worry about this edge. Okay, there's all kinds of crap on this thing already. my um, coffee cup. Oh. 
which tab am I on with this music? Dear Lord, I'm in so much trouble right now. Okay, sorry. Need to open OBS. Oh, a lot of stuff. I'm always sucked into little details. Any tips how not to spend time on details? Set yourself a time limit. I'm serious. And start out with really, really thick brushes. I mean, even with this brush, this brush goes to smaller scale than I even need. I'm gonna show you a line here. This is the smallest size. But as you can see, like this line, it wouldn't make visual sense with these sort of like chunky other brush strokes. So if I used these small lines or for details in anywhere in this painting, it would look terrible. It now looks like there is a crack of paint here running in the middle of the painting if you look closely. This is not acceptable <laughs> brush usage. So learning to use the bigger brushes is also really a handy a tool to keep your paintings looking consistent. And that's something that you can do with a setting. You can go into your brush studio and set a minimum scale as a percentage of the brush size. Or you can just have restraint, which is the harder thing to do, and decide not to do that, not to do brush strokes that small. I wonder if the person is now there like, okay, you lost me at restraint, I'm done, bye. <laughs> I think it still needs a bit more like warm hues somewhere. I like this sort of like rainbow effect this layer has. Now I'm going to do something that I know will probably crash the whole thing because uh, these are apparently really heavy uh, operations for the iPad to do. I'm gonna put this as a lighter. It just needs to be uh, lighter than 50% gray, and then it will read as lighter on the surface.
uh, Aegis' comment went into the automatic hiding system. Sorry, I don't control that. I can like unhide things manually. Um, what is happening? What am I talking about in our videos? Yes, uh, it's the details video. The airship. I think the automatic censoring system is very sensitive to like uh, links. Oh, I can manually make them visible, but I think automatically it blocks those out into review section. Somebody saying practice makes perfect. Uh, I learned this uh, new saying that is uh, practice makes progress. I think I like that more. So perfection is so overrated. You will never get there anyway. So honestly, why bother even talking about it? Like, for example, for this sunfish, what would be the perfect way to do this? Because I'm probably not going to do another sunfish painting anytime soon, and if somebody else does it, it will be a completely different painting done in a completely different style. It's not going to be a better painting, it's just going to be a different. So what is perfect in, in that scale? I don't think it even exists. I think painting is so much like running that unless you are the best runner in the world, you can really just like compare yourself to yourself. I think that has some meaning. But if you compare yourself to somebody who's the world's fastest runner at the time, like that takes all fun out of like the whole running hobby. I always spend some time like doing the color edits after these streams before I post the image online. And for this thing, I think the most uh, time I will be spending with like getting these rays uh, to have a lot of like vibrancy and detail in those. And also probably the same thing for the sunfish itself. I think it could use an overlay layer. I'm gonna set that as a clipping mask and now I'm going to go to curves and then lift up the lower shadows near to gray then for this I think with a combination of these layers I could make the sunfish itself also to have this sort of like 
um, I don't know how to pronounce iridescent, this sort of like oily look to the surface. What is advanced mesh? Wow, I haven't noticed this before. Does it actually do anything different? Looks like the same, but with more controls. I guess this would be useful uh, if I was aiming for a symmetrical transform. I don't know. I guess it now works pretty much the same way that Photoshop transform does. Do I need it? I don't know. It's all right. Actually, maybe I should do a liquify to this. I love liquify. I wish there was like more use for this in my style. highlights and this will give a little bit of that like color variation Somebody saying there's always somebody that is better and that's okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> like honestly, maybe you're the best at like what you can do. It's not like someone else is gonna come and do those paintings for you. So your technical skills might improve all the time, but it's not like somebody's gonna come and do your paintings better than you are. That's also why they have so much value and why it's important to finish and publish your paintings. It's like nobody else is gonna do them. Now I'm just scribbling this sort of like additive layer into visibility, but I'm using a brush that is the same scale that I used for the patterns. Make this sort of like another layer of patterns on this skin. These are sort of details that are fun 
when you have a large scale print and then you get closer and then you kind of like notice this another layer of texture. It doesn't kind of like change the visual impact, but it's there. It like holds the attention a bit longer. So it makes this piece look like it's the crest in a rainbow. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's a very small detail. My portrait teacher always said like you have to like be very careful with the contrast because according to her like you should reserve your contrast always to uh, the eye. That was a very specific uh, piece of advice from her and I'm not sure that it's applicable to all pieces of art even for portraits but it's something that I think about often. so I can start spending all of my money on the video equipment. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a Cameo X appearance from Vivi. Vivi? Vivi? Left. She might be sleeping. I'm using a very um, big eraser because I just want to have like smaller streaks of high saturation come through the surface. I'm taking out most of this color and then adding saturation to it and then motion blur. Somebody saying, I want to see the brush that you paint with. Uh, it is Mikko Rao from my brush set. Uh, since you cut and Procreate 5X, is there anything you want to see in Procreate 6 when it's eventually released? Select by color. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> If anybody from Savage is watching this, and I doubt they are, they probably have more important things to do than watch a crazy Finnish guy painting live uh, fish. Please, please do select by color. If there's one thing that I'm pretty confident with my skills is that like, I think I'm like pretty uh, awesome at the 
color edits. I can't really kind of like crush the image in the edit to the next level from where they are. Um, so having these sort of like tools like selecting by color would be like so useful for that phase. And there's some like uh, diagonal brush strokes here that I think are troublesome. Let's use this much brush here so that somebody in the chat can feel. A warm and fussy about it. Okay, and that's the extent of the smudge brush for this entire piece. I'm gonna take these out for a second because uh, I'm gonna paint on this layer. Probably I should like stop already. Looking. It's it's uh, worryingly quiet. Just a second. Okay, so she's not doing something evil. She's just sleeping, but by my shoes, which is like worrying. I'm sure there will be a color edit, but like I think this is it. Also, this means that like I can finish um, live stream in two hours, which is great. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining, and let's paint something else the next time. And now I have finally made a sunfish. Oh, I just noticed a paint blob and near the tail that I need to fix later. But I will fix it, and then I will post this image on Twitter. But there are so many images that I that I need to post on Instagram after the weather boxes that are now there that I will bring all of those into my Instagram feed later. Thanks everybody for joining and your questions and go oh, and paint something. Listen to my playlist because you asked for it and <laughs> now it's there. Um, okay, I really should be like more um, faster at uh, quitting these things. Okay, bye.